Doctors. Um, I just want to take a moment to introduce Dr. Desai. He's the CMIO at Houston Methodist Hospital, and we're so grateful for him um, to be here presenting with us today. So, thanks, well, Dr. thank Desai. you. So, uh, I wanted to kind of share a story, our story, if you will. Um, our story is going to kind of walk you through our journey of what it is from a physician's perspective or a clinical perspective. Um, you know, in today's world, we are consumed with too much and we need ways to synthesize that much, if you will, because I think that's what leads to a lot of what we call burnout. And so some of when I think of burnout, it doesn't mean someone just quitting. But burnout can also equally mean where I'm not using the data that's presented to me in a way that should be used or could be used, right? And so um, what we're gonna share is a little bit of our journey, where we are, where we've been, where we're headed, and what we see hope for. So, so kind of just to give you a little snapshot of us as an organization, you know, we're an epic shop, so our what, what I, you'll always hear me if I'm ever in a talk is say that it was very important and critical to us to ensure that we had a stable core or stable platform in order for us to do anything fun, if you will. If we're going to move on and, and the size and the growth of our place is that if you look at it, I have 6,700 physicians that I have to worry about, of which if you look at the number right above it, less than 10% of that is really actually employed by the group. So largely private physicians, right, in this marketplace where the dynamics are different, right? It's not all inclusive in one place. And so for us, having the footprint that we have of seven hospitals, have a residency learning program, it's really important for us to understand how do we make information synthesizable, actionable for the people at hand. So, you know, what we all are in this, this world, if you will, of saying, what does cost mean? What, do, what does cost guidance mean? What does cost transparency mean? Well, what does that illumination really matter? Why do we care? And how is this sustainable? Is healthcare sustainable as it is today? No, I think we all agree with that. But we're all working hard to find ways and strategies to change and to reshape that for our organization. So our first foray into this is really saying, doctor, doctors would ask, well, you want me to make changes in my, my pattern of behavior? You want me to do things? but you're always telling me after the fact. You're not telling me in real time. You don't really tell me when I need to do it. It's always after. So it's always, I'm always in trouble. I'm never, I'm never getting a good scorecard unless you kind of tell me ahead of time. So, you know, what we wanted to realize is that we realized that it was a shift, right? And this is a, a couple slides here I'm gonna share with you, a slide that I shared with one of our physician peer groups. When we were talking about what is, what's happening folks. And this is a compilation of saying that, you know, at one point in our lives, it was really around, it was all about me, it's just my world. Now it's about us and it's a collective partnership. And the reality is doctors are burning out, but why? It's, it's a shift. You know, if we don't understand value-based care, if we don't understand how to shift your market to prepare for it, are you, gonna, are you gonna be sustainable? The answer is probably not. I mean, you look at it, people that say that they're gonna operate business as usual, are likely you're gonna start, you're gonna read about them in the papers like we do today. But the reality is, if you think about, it, it's not so far away that 2026 is right around the corner and you think about the amount of expenditures that we're spending in healthcare as a whole, right? So it's just a, you know, this is a quote from Alex that he had put out that I kind of, I felt it was important to kind of share that we're in a, we're in a transformation phase where consumerism has shifted the way we deliver. People want to know, people want to be engaged, people are engaged, right? So they are helping to drive the outcome. They're helping to under, they understand what an outcome is. They understand how value is. What do, I, what do I get out of the care that I'm getting or receiving? I mean, look at the, if I look back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, did I, did I, would I have ever thought that FaceTiming a visit with a patient would actually be a reality? I thought, you know, would it have been like, it would have been, would Snapchat have really been something that would have been a landing pad of how I was gonna now start to do, provide care to patients? I mean, like, you think about where it is. And so this goes back to the study that was done in 2016 where it really, this just kind of brings it all full circle that, yeah, 50% of the docs, they, there, is, there is at least one symptom of burnout, right? 87% is clerical, right? And this kind of leads into why we're gonna talk a little bit more is they think that the EHR is too much and then at the end of the day, if you look at the ED docs, they say that they're clicking more today than they ever did versus the scribble T-sheets, twirl it, and sign it, then walk away. 
I mean, I remember while growing up where my uncles who were physicians would have a, uh, a chart. It would be multi-pay, multi kind of vol voluminous chart. And you'd open it up and it would say, cough, RTC two weeks. And you'd walk up to them and say, what did you do? Oh, that person came with a cough. They could recite a narrative about what happened to them, but that's all they wrote. Because we've gone from what was once a, a narrative to a billing, to a regulatory, it's consumed a lot. So uh, how do we make all this information actionable? So what do we do? We, do we go, do we still worry about volume? Do we worry about quantity? Do we worry about, you know, I don't really care about the cost anymore? Or do we, we shift? And that's kind of where we're at today. And I think the whole pendulum is shifting and it's starting to move. Now, I think many of us are at different points of this in our journey. I don't think we're all there all at once, but I would say like in my own market, um, we're largely still fee for service, right? So it's, it's, how do you tell those doctors that you gotta care, right? And how do you tell the docs that who are in a value-based market, fee for service still exists, right? Like they're like, you're crazy, Nick. That was like way back when, right? And so it's bringing kind of to the medium there of how do you get them engaged? And how do you ultimately show them what cost means? And how do you interweave that into what you do? So I would say from my own perspective, and this is something I've coined for ourselves, my organization is, you know, it's my focus for this year is to how do we tie it together? And it's all about transparency, it's all about interoperability, and it's really about efficiency. And to me, this is the three things that if I could focus my entire 2019 and beyond of how do we start moving on the next phase of what the EHR can do, it's these three things, you know? so as we meet with our vendors, our partners, and others out there, this is key to us as an organization of understanding what that means. So I'm gonna kind of share with you like what I call what shedding light on what matters, right? So our journey began of saying, okay, we wanna do this, but we have so much, what do we do? And so we partnered with a company called Illumicare. Illumicare has, it's a, it's a smart ribbon, which I'm gonna share with you in a minute. But what ultimately it's, there's so much data out there how do you aggregate it in a very synthesizable format, something simple, slow, small, where it's not intrusive to what you do and still present it to be actionable? So you think about it, well, great, Nick, you've got, you've got your EHR, but you have all these things and all these people you work with, but how do I get it to my hands when I need it, right? And so, because it's not about Nick, surgeon, it's about the trainee, it's about the hospital, it's about the pharmacist, it's about your utilization review, that, that medical director, they all have very different needs. And by the way, venue matters, right? Is it the ICU? Is it, is it ambulatory? Is it inpatient? Where does it matter? It, it, so venue matters, person tied, the user matters. So show me the data, right? And it was all about what it was. And so we started out this journey with the Lumicare and created what was called the Smart Ribbon. You'll see on the bottom right here, this is an example of what the ribbon looks like. The ribbon, I'll show you samples of that in a few minutes. But the ribbon lives on top. It's an executable file that sits right on top of our EHR. It aggregates the data and everything right from our EHR. But the best part about this thing is that it pulls it all together in one place. I can call it up when I want it. I can force it to be passive or active. So I engage on how I want it. And so we shared this with about 145 doctors and providers, and that included mid-levels, physicians, and also with 38 pharmacists. At the end of the 98-day pile, I'll show you some data, cost data too. But not only did we shift the curve, that I would say 72% of our doctors at the end of the pile said, this is actually not just valuable, finally you're giving me a tool that is meaningful. And in every one of those conversations, cost was important, but not the only reason why they liked the tool. What they liked about it was that this allowed them to see things in a more holistic view in one place. So as I start my day, as I round, in, in whatever workflows I use, I could pull it together. So clearly here you'll see in a second, you see observation status, stewardship, um, PDMP, and a reference tool. So again, all this did was pull together our data and then aggregate with our like partners like Vigilance uh, and others and ARUP and others to kind of bring that together. So to kind of share with you, when you look at it, this is what happens. So you turn on the ribbon and these, steward, these illuminations pop up. They, they hide away within five seconds. So it's active and passive. 
I can minimize it. I can control what I want to see, how I want to see. But the cool part about it is today in some many states where we have to check the PDMP or we have to check your registry for our opioid task force, that we'd have to go look through our EHR. It's there, but you got to find it. This lets you put it right in, one, right in one place. Well, you know what? I'd like to know really at a quick glance what antibiotics a person's on or what those resulted meds look like or results of labs look like. I could do that in one click. And then I could use the EHR, which it has always been never to be replaced, is the core platform through which I'm going to drill into everything else that I need to get. And that's really important to kind of call out. So example, the PDMP that pops up. So now in one place I can see what someone's overdose risk score is. As in the, in the actual workflow when I'm ordering. So, which is really important to kind of call out. So I, doctor, am writing an order for uh, someone to have morphine because for a post-op pain me. I can actually see what that score looks like as I'm ordering. If you drill further, I could look at, you know, all the way down into using an, uh, I can do benchmarking, I could use my MME equivalency calculator, but here's the kicker. We did this study, 90 days, like, will it even make a difference? And not only did we show the difference, we were able to shift the cost curve that within the 90 day mark, about $107,000. Overall, our, what we believe that in 2019, for this hospital, we have an opportunity of 4.5% reduction in our cost, which will lead to about between $1.7 to $2.8 million, just for one hospital. As an organization, it's upwards of, you know, what appears to be somewhere closely in the ballpark of maybe 18, 19, 20 million dollars. Again, what did that do? I did nothing except present information in a very consumable format. So show me the data, show me, show me the money. And so ultimately, how do I show you that? Clearly you can see this, this is just a sampling of the pre-ribbon, which is on the left side. The post-ribbon is on the right. As you look at all admissions, zero to three days, three to seven days, seven to 12 days, 12 plus days, you can see a complete shift in the way ordering pattern and behavior is of our providers. So, and when you look at this, this is a very hard slide to see, and it's just color. And all I want you to know is that blue to green is a good thing, okay? So you could see a shift in how people were reacting to the ribbon. You could see an example of how people were playing with the ribbon and where it was meaningful. And what this allowed us to do is, again, this goes back to the actionable component. So I am now the medical director hat playing of a UM doctor. I could see that in August, or in late August, this person, physician V, his pattern changed. Let's drill into that doctor and see what was happening in that purview, right? In that space. Before this, I could not have a good holistic view of seeing what's happening. So I think what this is telling us, it's, uh, you know, and I, I said this at, at our meeting we had a few, uh, a few days ago, it's the year of the widget, right? It's bringing all the widgets together. It's all the tool sets that we have curating them together in a way that makes it easy for the provider, the user, to consume it and use it. So clearly what this allowed us to do is also now let's kind of moving forward of saying, well, how do you also know that there's opportunity? Well, the good opportunity is we also can see where the alternatives are for from an IV formulation to a PO formulation, or perhaps maybe there is a cost alternative that you could have, or maybe you don't need to order that H hemoglobin A1C three times in this admission. Maybe you only need to do it one time. To put that information out there, working with our pharmacy partners, working with our stewardship councils, and embedding their knowledge base, that CDS, so we don't duplicate it in the EHR, and synchronizing matters, right? So you're not duplicating efforts. So this was a great project to bring many different groups of people together to kind of help to look at what are those alternatives, what do we want to identify, what do we want to focus on, especially when you think of our, our, our folks from our pharmacy side when we're looking at opportunities. So major themes, people felt empowered. Wow, this finally makes sense. Um, I can see it, I actually understand it. But more importantly, what they got out of it was, wow, this is efficient, it's intuitive. Um, you're actually aggregating information that I didn't even know before. And you know what? Those tools that you give, give us more of them. And that's henceforth um, closing the gap, right? And how Vigilant said, okay, great. So it's not just about the data that I just showed you with our partners and others, but now it's how do you go full circle? 
you know, and it's about all my providers, right? And so the physicians were like, okay, so, and the pharmacists are like, how do we bring vigilance into the mix? So closing the gap, closing the gap matters. And so here, this is, you know, again, what I think a lot of folks talk about, and I think I was sharing with somebody like, you come to HIMSS to just learn about what's new. No, I come to HIMSS to learn about what we, from our own partners, what we should be optimizing, what we should be using, and how can we grow on that partnership. This has been an eight-year journey between Methodist and Vigilance, right? And we've, they've been fundamentally in part of it in every area of our care, care management tools. And again, as we went through launching our 12 CDC recommendations within Epic, they were there alongside us when we were doing building this. So what does Vigilance in this ribbon look like and how does it change their work? So today, this is what a pharmacist would see. Again, the ribbon, just like I would see as for a physician or another end user, but you'll see there's some illumination. So you can see that on the side, just an active illumination has popped up, but it hasn't been acknowledged. The pharmacist would open it up and be able to actually activate it. So now previously where I'd had to go into my Vigilance app to kind of look at everything now in my EHR while I'm working, reviewing as the unit-based pharmacist, I'm seeing it all in one place and it's synchronizing. That's the cool feature, right? So again, bringing it back to full, full start and saying, wow, this person has now, should we? And this goes back to what I'm gonna show you as our future state and what we're hoping to do. But it lets the pharmacist now work in that environment that they're used to, that they're reviewing and managing, and ultimately looking at the opportunity and saving those, those you know, the, the kind of the conversation points so that now in one place they're working. So you can see through this, we are building out our categories that help marry up to what you already see. And so now the, the provider is not seeing anything different. So the best part about this as I go through this is that you acknowledge these is what now happens. So what have our, what have our pharmacists wanted? Well, Nick, that's great, but build us the work list right into it. I don't want to have to figure out just one piece of it per patient. I want to look at it from a whole holistic view of what I'm used to doing. So this is what's next for us, right? So closing the gap matters, not just at this provider level, user matters, venue matters, and how we're using it, right? So what's next for us is, for our physicians, it's really, you know, like, okay, well, how do I expand what I just showed you and take it to a whole new level? So this is on the horizon of what we call My360. What does My360 look like? It's this. This 360 in one snapshot tells me vitals. It tells me my, and again, these are all units that we can pull in, right? So I'm looking at not just the labs, but I'm looking at the result. I'm not only pulling in reference articles related to what, oh, by the way, the seroplasm is 24. Well, there's a Wilson's disease article right there. We're actually now looking at your labs and looking at or your, your meds and looking at, say, your cost data right in the one place. So now we've taken it one step further that we're no longer just talking about cost. And if you notice, I've not used the word cost, efficiency, cost transparency much because that's just a benefit. The reality here is we're giving you tools and working with partners like Vigilance and Illumicare is to really bring together the efficiency tools that our providers need. That's what matters. So, if you have any questions, uh, I'll, I'm here to answer them, and if not, look forward to keep working with Vigilance and Home Care. Yeah. yeah. Now, if there were any lessons learned um, from implementing this with the provider workflow, if there was any pushback, and if you have um, any advice that you would share with other hospitals, <laughs> the curate your. Yes. So the question was, any lessons learned from going live and things that we would have done maybe perhaps differently? I think curating your provider list, knowing who you're showing this to matters. Um, knowing what you want to show them matters. Um, so part of our journey has been, one was turning it on. Through this iteration, we've also learned what are, the, what are those passive and active alerts that you'd want to make front and center? So perhaps maybe there's, there's a, you know initiative in your organization that these are the five drugs we're really watching and monitoring. Well, how do we highlight those as top of mind illuminations first, right? So working through that. And then the other part is in any organization, IT lives in silos. 
even though we think we don't, like all of us who live in IT, we never live in silos, but we all say we know we do. But it's really mapping out and marrying up the other initiatives in your, in your organization where you could leverage tools like this, right? So for example, our opioid task force has been really working hard of managing that and to being able to tie that PDMP report right in so a provider sees it was really critical. But again, that wouldn't have happened unless we really brought others to the table. And that's what I think this is. This allows us to kind of bridge the gap with many of our different vendors and solution partners. Got it. Any other questions? Well, thank you.